Alrighty, uh, Professor Crush here, and I'm going to do a quick review, an overview of an exercise that my class is working on in VIS 114 of creating value pattern. And there's step-by-step -step images in Blackboard, so this is just to support that, and it's just a review and just some more information that may be helpful. This is what the finished product would look like, and value patterns are it's it's a nice exercise in understanding how to work with a a, a dark area a light air a mid area and a uh, low key dark area so you have a light middle and dark range of values and in this particular project i'm kind of assigning 20 percent 50 percent and 80 percent of either black or of a color that we're working with and the point of the exercise is to understand that values are extremely important, whether you're working in black and white or especially if you're working in color and values are hard to see, they exist. And if values are too close, you're going to have, quote, value um, problems where things are going to blend in to, together. So you may have type that gets lost in a colored background, or you may have one uh, item next to another item in your design. And again, even if they're in color, if they translate in black and white, if you go to a photocopy and you say have a background in green, dark green in your layout, and you have orange red type, you think, well, that's going to work because they're opposite colors. Meanwhile, the green might translate to a 70% gray and the red might translate to an 80% gray, which means they're really close in value and they're going to get lost together. So it's, it's easier to see it in black and white. It's a little harder to see it in color. And this exercise is very simple, but the, the good part of this is that you get an understanding that if you have three distinct values that have enough contrast between the three of them that any one of them can go up against the next, you're, go you're going to have a cohesive design and you're going to have good contrast. So in this particular sample here, the, the black is like 20% gray, which appears here and then it appears here and it appears in this background there. Here's the 50% gray that's in the middle, it's in the background and here it's at the bottom. And then the 80% gray, <coughs> which is in the background along the bottom and then in the middle. Keep rotating. There's only six possibilities of rotating light, middle, and dark through this design that gets repeated three times. So this is a very simple design. When you do this exercise, it's absolutely important to keep it simple. If you start doing something that has a lot of detail, it's going to drive you crazy. There's a couple of other student samples. This is very easily done. This is just a geometric thing with triangles. Okay in grayscale and using blue again as a color and here's one that uses circles and this also has a nice feel and this one was done with grayscale for three of them and red for the other three and uh, it doesn't really matter what color you could do it all in, in grayscale but I just been introducing to do three of them in color it still is a full rotation of those values. If you want to see what those values, how they fall out. Okay, this is a sheet that kind of gives you an indication. Because you might say, well, how do I know when I'm getting up to six? <laughs> six is the only possibility. And you can have one number repeat in the same spot more than twice. So let's say that one is the light value, two is the middle, and three is the dark. So here's one in this pyramid and it goes two and then three. Here's one in the pyramid again, and it goes three, two. So we've exhausted the possibilities with one in the middle. Then we have two in the middle, one, three, two, uh, three, one, you know, and the last one, three in the middle here in the pyramid, and then two, one, one, two, and that's it. You can't get beyond that, it's not possible. How you assign these is up to you. And if you're doing the light value in the gray, that's one of them. And if you're doing a light value in the color, that's another one. If you have two of those in the light in the in that spot, you know, that's it. That's all where they appear. Otherwise, it's going to be middle or darker values. Um, it kind of falls into place by itself. Uh, what the assignment sheet looks like 
is this, where it's just very simple. It's a notebook page that has these horizontal frames worked out already. Okay, this is a design that I used to just as a sample. Okay, and what I did was I just did a horizontal line doing part of the bottom and then literally took a quarter. Do I still have a quarter handy? Took a quarter here and laid that into position and uh, drew around it to make that circular shape. Okay, and then after you have a design that's going to work to repeat six times, what I do is I take pencil and put pencil on the back, okay, and then trace that off on the um, ledger paper. You're going to trace that off six times. So, like, let's say this is the um, the ledger, uh, the Bristol that you're going to paint on. Okay, this is just a sheet, but if this was a big sheet of the Bristol, I'd be laying that down, drawing over it so it traces like a carbon print onto that. I'd move to another one and draw it, move to another one, and I have to repeat this six times. So I have six of these ready to go. And you'll see that in the step-by-step -step images, it's more clear. I don't really have it here because the ones that I used were actually drawn on here. Here's the Bristol. And this was laid on top and traced off. And after these were completely painted, okay, after these were painted, then they were cut out from here and pasted onto the, onto the notebook page. And um, that's... That's the gist of the assignment. I mean, as far as working, first thing you want to do is get a design, trace it off three, uh, six times, and then just, um, I would work light to dark. Um, what I did here with the blue is here's the blue paint, solid blue. Here's the white. And here's where I was mixing 25% or 20%. And here's where then I added more blue and I got into a 50% area. And when I was done working with that, I started adding more blue to get to an 80%. So those three values are painted from, from here, here, and here. There's no pure white in this exercise and there's no uh, pure blue, meaning 100% blue. It's all percents. So it's not, again, drastic, uh, it's not the extremes, it's a, a, a light value, middle value, and a dark value. And uh, when the three of those are applied and painted uh, onto here, you know, then again, you can see here was the light value, here was the middle value, okay, and here's the dark value that's painted here, here, and here uh, on the bottom there. So, um... Keep it clean when you work on the Bristol. After you have it painted, you can overpaint a tiny bit because you're going to go through there with a razor blade and you're going to cut these things out neatly. So it helps clean up the edges. And those edges, obviously, because they're traced off from here, should fairly good, fit really nicely into these slots. All right. Um, trying to think if there's anything else really to tell you on it. I mean, that's it. It's very self-explanatory. Um, as far as my class, I'm trying to get students to check in with me with their little design that you do before you do it. I don't want, because if there's a problem, if it's not going to work, or if it's too elaborate, I want you to be able to put the brakes on it and make a correction so that you have a very simple design that's going to work well to repeat itself um, the three times. Okay, so again, once these things are cut out, what you'd be doing is taking those all, putting them on the back of something, taking the rubber cement, gluing, uh, working one or two at a time, and as you have them neatly cut out, pasting them into position. The step-by-step -step images that I have in the assignment show that very clearly. But I just thought I would do a video in addition just to review some of the thoughts on this, uh, some of the goals, and, and just to expand on some things that, you know, hopefully are helpful if you have any uh, questions. All right, so um, that is it. I'm going to sign off, and good luck with the project.